Let's add a cool custom 3D block model to Minecraft. Forging fabric courses with advanced topics such as entities, custom structures, and 3D armor models linked in the description below. Alright, friends, that's back until you once more. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding a custom block model to Minecraft. So we've already seen the custom item model with the staff. And now it's time for the block model. Now this is going to be a little more complicated than the item model, but no worries at all. So we're going to go first of all and make a new class. So in our custom package, we're going to make a new Java class called the Mithril Blaster Block. Right now, this is going to extend the block class right here once again. And then let's just hover over this create constructor matching super. Let me zoom out a little bit. There you go. And then we also need a direction property. So this is going to be a public static final direction property. This one from net Minecraft state property. And this is going to be called facing and is equal to properties dot horizontal facing. Actually, there you go. And this is something we're going to need so we, that we can specify the block states. This is just a block state property and so that we can change the rotation of this block because we actually want a specific rotation here. We also want to override four different methods. That is the get placement state method, the rotate method. We want to override the mirror method. And then last but not least, actually the most important one is the, once again, of course, the append properties method. And we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. So this one is going to need the builder.add and then the facing property. Now we've already seen this in the block states property tutorial. Where we've seen how to do this and why we need this. And then for the rotation and the mirroring here, what we want to do is state.rotate mirror.get rotation and then putting in the state.get with the facing property. Now this, I believe, is all taken from the abstract furnace block, I believe. So let's just press the shift key twice and let's go abstract furnace block. Let's go there, yes. And I believe this should also have the same one. This also has the horizontal facing block facing here. And then let's just see, this is the rotate. Yeah, rotate mirror, get facing. And then this one as well. Because of course, when you set down a furnace, then the front of the furnace always faces you. And that is pretty much the same thing that we want as well. So this is why this, you know, pretty much looks exactly the same. This is state dot width, the facing property, and then rotation dot rotate, and then passing in the state.get with the facing property right here. And there you go. And then the placement itself here is just going to be this dot get default state dot with the facing property again, and then context. So ctx dot get player facing dot get opposite. Basically, the front of this block should face the opposite direction of where the player is facing. Obviously, then it would be looking at us. This is the general idea of this. And that would be the block almost complete. There's one more thing we need to do in a little bit, but the actual block class is almost completely done. But what we can already do is go into our mod blocks class and create a new block. So let's just copy over the leaves here actually. And this is going to be the mithril underscore blaster. And of course, changing the name here as well, mithril underscore blaster. And now incredibly important that you make a new mithril blaster block. So this, of course, needs to be a new block of the block class that you've just created. I see this time and time again, where people are like, my custom block model doesn't work or, you know, something of that effect. And then they just haven't made the actual class here. So make sure that this is not a new block, but new Mithra Blaster block in this case. And we're just going to actually not copy, but we're going to make it of a certain material here. So let's just say material dot metal. That's going to be fine. And non-opaque, we actually do also need. Right now we have the actual block registered, but what is the actual block model here, right? Where Where is this coming from? Well, this, of course, comes from Blockbench once again. Right now we've registered the block and of course now it would be in game, but, you know, it doesn't have any model. Where does the model come from? Well, the model, of course, comes once again from Blockbench. So I've already prepared this right here. The actual model is a little bit older. I've already used that in the last two tutorial series and it has once again been made by Platinum G17. Uh, credits, of course, in the description below and in the credits file as well. But this is really, you know, it's really useful to basically take a look at, the, you know, a a little bit of a more complex model right here. So we'll just export this. So once again, when you have a model, right, when you create a model here, then you can just go to file, export, and then export item block model right here. So this is the Mithril Blaster JSON, and I'm going to say yes, go. And this was once again the JSON file. So we're going to get into our resources folder, assets, into the tutorial mod folder. We need a block states JSON as well as copying this one over. So let's actually copy the JSON file over first. This is the JSON file that we've just exported from 
our block bench model. So you can see this is sort of how it looks like. It's quite a bit, you know, quite a few things in here. And what's also very important here is that we have to change, well, I mean, wouldn't say a couple of things, but one thing in particular is what's very important here, the textures. So this one right here should be Oriel mod colon machines. I'm just going to call it machines. And then the particles, of course, are the same. So this once again, of course, just points to the textures folder. So we're going to go in a little bit of a roundabout way here. So we actually need a new folder in here called machines. I just, you know, prefer to do it like this and then we can get the actual texture right here. We can right click and you can save it as I already have this prepared already. So we're just going to add this in here. There you go. And then it should also work with the correct textures as well. We still need a normal item model like any other block, basically. So we can, for example, just take this planks mithril underscore blaster right here. And then this just points back to the Mithra Blaster block model file. And then for the block states, this is a little bit more interesting. So this has a few more things in here, but also shouldn't be any worries there. I'm just going to copy this over. Everything, of course, available to you in the description below, GitHub repository, and individual gist as well. And you can see we basically have the four facing properties. So this is exactly what we added here, the facing property right here. And this can take on north, east, south, and west. Should make a lot of sense, right? And then we just rotate the actual block here by however many degrees we need so that it faces the correct direction. That's pretty much all that there is to it for the block states JSON file. Shouldn't be too complicated. Uh, it always points to the same model here. It just rotates it and that is pretty much it. And one last thing in the tutorial mod client class here, we still want to add the cutout actually as well. So we want to say this is the Mithril Blaster cutout. There you go. And that should be it as well. And now everything here should be set up correctly. The block should display properly. It should already rotate and everything should be fine. And that's going to be one addition that we need to do in just a moment. But first of all, let's actually take a look at the block. All right, we find ourselves in Minecraft. As you can see, the Mithril Blaster has been added. Let's set it down and there it is. And if I set it down in a different direction, there you go. It actually rotates as well. And one thing I actually forgot was the, the translation here, but no worries at all. We can fix that in just a moment. But you can see that if I hover over it, well, it's a full block. And if I, you know, jump on it, it's also a full block. So you can see that that might be, you know, a bit of an issue. This is what's called a voxel shape. And the big issue here is that we would have to make a voxel shape for each different direction. So we have to make a voxel shape like this, and then like this, and then like this, and then like this. There's no easy way to rotate it. So it can be a little bit tedious, especially if you have a lot of different, you know, custom blocks and such like that. Then it can be, become quite tedious, but let's just see how it works. First of all, of course, added the translation right here, and now it goes to the voxel shape. So the voxel shapes will be added in the block itself, in the block class right here. And we will need to basically export this from Blockbench once again. Now for this, you're actually going to need a plugin for Blockbench. So go to File, Plugins, and then go to and find the Mod Utils plugin. So I have the, already have this installed. Just go to Available, search Mod Utils. You should find this here and then install it. And then you can export the voxel shape. What's very important is that before you export it, you need to make all of your cubes under a group that's called voxel shapes exactly written like this. Make sure that it is exactly written like this with an uppercase V and uppercase S all together. Please make sure that this is correct. And then all of your cubes have to be under this. So right now this is facing north. And like I said, we need to actually, and we need to export the voxel shapes in every direction. So we're just going to do this first. So we're going to go to export, export voxel shape. Now here we want our yarn mappings because of course we're using fabric. So we want yarn mappings. We'll say confirm. And this is going to be voxel shape underscore N because it's facing north. And I will show you what the contents of this file are. So these are the contents of the actual file. So we're going to have to copy this over. Now, if you have any of those like crazy weird numbers right here, I usually prefer to change them to the nearest integer. So you can see th those, of course, you know, just basically deleting everything after the decimal point. And then here, this is just like almost zero, but not quite, right? This is like negative 3.5, 10 to the power of negative 15. So this is a like 15 zeros and then three. So it's like, okay, this is zero, right? I highly recommend doing this as well, making it a little bit nicer here. Because with those weird numbers, you know, it's going to be, it's just not, it's just not a good idea. So basically do that as well. And then we can copy this over. So I'm just going to select all control A, control C to copy it. And then I'm going to switch to IntelliJ again. And then here, what I want to do is I want to add the shape. So we're going to make a new private static final voxel shape called shape underscore N, which is equal to exactly what we've copied over. And then I can just go through alt and enter to import it, alt and enter to import this as well. 
and then Alt and Enter to import this as well. And then you can see the voxel shape here is done. Now, once again, we need to actually do this for all directions. I'm going to show this for one more direction and the rest I'm going to copy over because, like I said, it can get very, very tedious. All right, so we're just going to turn it around. So we're going to select our group right here and then we're going to rotate it. Now, what you'll find is that, you know, the rotation here works totally fine. And as you can see, there you go. But then it is a little bit off center, as you can see, right? So you can see that it's a little bit off center. Now, that's not an issue. What we can do is we can change the position here and it's going to work. Now, you will have to change the position by using the arrow files, right? So you can do this and then do this. And now it's centered again. So that's just fine, right? So sometimes it's a little finicky. So if I change the position like this, it's actually going to work. So no worries there, no worries there. Uh, sometimes what happens is that if I actually put in a number and press enter, you can see, you know, it all, you know, it screws up. I don't know why this is the case. Uh, it's all block bench weirdness uh, to some sort, but yeah. Basically, make sure that this is then centered. And once it is centered, we can now think think about this, right? This is north, east, south, west. So this is the west facing direction. So now what we can do is we can go on to file again, export, export voxel shape. And this would then be shape west, right? And once again here, I would open it up. You can just open it up here as well. There you go. And once again, change the, you know, crazy numbers to, well, the ne nearest integer, right? Basically getting everything away from here. And then this one would be the west direction. But like I said, you will need to do this for all directions. I hope that this is clear, right? Just go for it, rotate it around, change the position so that they're proper again, so that it's properly centered, and then export. Depending on how complex your 3D models are, you know, you can also make a simpler voxel shape. However, you know, usually people do want the exact voxel shape. You know, if you have like crazy complex things, I highly suggest making a voxel shape that just approximates your custom shape because they don't have to match, as you have seen already in the game. But whatever the case may be, after having basically then all of the different voxel shapes exported, you will end up with four shape variables. Like I said, I will copy over the other three. Those are, of course, available to you as well in the GitHub repository and individual just as well. And then we'll have to use those in the get outline shape method. So this one right here, get outline shape. And right here, what we're going to do is we're going to make a switch statement. So there's going to be a switch statement of state.get. And then the facing property, we're going to say case north, colon, return shape n. Case south is going to be return, return shape south. Case west is return shape west and then last but not least we also have east which is going to return shape east and then we also want to add a default which just returns the shape n right when exporting it also make sure that you export the shape under the right name because sometimes people have been a little bit confused with wait is this now south or west or you know or what is it now so just keep that in mind right north east south west basically where this one is pointing where the front of it is pointing Right, and after having added this, now the actual outline is going to be correct. So as you clearly see, this can be quite complicated. And, you know, even with not that complex of a shape, all things considered, the voxel shape is quite complicated. But in theory, yes, you can also just use the, you know, block create cuboid shape. And in theory, also do this yourself. So you can create voxel shapes yourself. It's a little more complicated. It could work in theory. So let's see how it looks in game. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft once again. And if I set it down, you can see it. There you go. It works and I can set it down in any direction. And the overlay, basically the outline is always going to be perfectly fitted to the actual lock model. So it works, you know, exactly how you would expect it to. And that is pretty much it for the voxel shapes and the custom block model. Right, and that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.